Felicitous greetings, fellow fanatics. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Adam the Fanatic, and today we're taking a look at Pixel Tactics Mega Man Blue Edition, a dueling card game by Level 99 Games. Although I'll specifically be using this version to teach, you can also use it with the other Mega Man Pixel Tactics or any of the originals. Without any further ado, let's dive in! In Pixel Tactics, two players will be competing to take out the other player's leader before their own is defeated. To start, each player has an identical 28 card deck, one in red and the other in blue. Each player should shuffle their deck and draw five cards. After that, each player chooses one card to be their leader and places it face down so that there's enough room for a 3x3 grid around said leader. Once both players have chosen, flip them over and place them so that the leader side is legible to you. This means that the four colored text boxes will be upside down for your leader and only for your leader. If both players chose the same leader, place the leader on the bottom of your deck, draw a new card, and repeat the process until each player has a unique leader. After that, choose a player to go first and you'll start the first round. The first round of the game is the ceasefire round. This allows players to set up their starting forces without being attacked. Each round of the game, including the ceasefire round, is played in three waves, starting with the vanguard, the area in front of your leader, then the flanks, beside your leader, and finally, the rear, behind your leader. Starting with the first player, you'll take two actions with your vanguard. For the most part, you'll just be drawing cards or recruiting heroes during the ceasefire round, each of which takes one action. Drawing a card is just what it sounds like. You take a card from your deck and add it to your hand. But bear in mind, you can't take this action if you have five or more cards in your hand. To recruit a hero, simply take it from your hand and place it in one of the empty spaces for the current wave. As a reminder, your side of the battlefield is a 3x3 grid and your leader is always in the center. After the first player has taken two actions during the vanguard wave, the second player will do the same. Then repeat the process for the flank and rear waves. At the end of each round, including the ceasefire round, the first player will switch so that the player that went second in the previous round will go first in the next. Now you're ready to begin the game proper, but before that, let's take a closer look at the anatomy of a hero card. Like the leader side of a card, the hero side lists attack in red and starting health in blue. Then you have four text boxes. The red one shows the character's ability when they're a hero in the vanguard, the green box shows their ability when they're placed in the flank, and the blue one shows their ability when they're in the rear. The purple text box shows their effect when played as an order, which we'll touch on more in a moment. Standard rounds have the same vanguard, flank, rear format of the ceasefire round, but you have a much wider range of options. You still get two actions per turn, and may still use them to draw or recruit, in addition to several new actions. You'll usually want to activate individual heroes or your leader in some way. They can attack or move, and some can cast spells. Each hero can only activate once per turn. They cannot activate on the same turn they were recruited. To attack, a hero and their target must both be in melee, unless the attacker has the ranged attack ability. A hero is in melee if they are the foremost character in their column. So in this example, Mega Man, Dr. Light, and Guts Man would be in melee for the blue player, while Needle Man, Quick Man, and Hard Man would be in melee for the red player. When a character is attacked, put damage on them equal to the attack. If a character hits 0 HP, they aren't defeated until the end of the wave. Once a wave ends, any characters who are at 0 HP or less are flipped over to show that they've been killed. They no longer block characters behind them, but do block you from recruiting new heroes to that space. To move a character, simply move them to any empty space. Unlike most actions, you do not have to wait until the wave a hero is in to move them. Two heroes may also switch positions, but this is a long action, which simply means that it takes up both of your actions for the turn. Spell abilities will be listed on a hero's card. Simply do what it says. For example, if Shadow Man is in the flank, then you can activate his spell to sacrifice him to instantly discard an enemy hero from play. Some leaders may have unique actions. These are not spells, but act similarly. For example, Iceman has a free action. This means you can use it in addition to your two standard actions during your turn. This allows him to declare an enemy hero unable to act on his opponent's next turn. If a hero is in your hand, you may elect to play them as an order instead of as a hero. When you do so, simply do what it says in the purple text box, then discard the card. So for example, Woodman allows you to remove all damage from your vanguard heroes. Finally, you may also spend an action to clear corpses. When you do this, simply choose a face down card from your side of the field and discard it, even if it's not part of the current wave. If at any point you run out of cards, you simply continue to play with what you have in your hand and on the field. Play will continue like this until a leader is defeated. If both leaders are defeated in the same wave, then the player with the most heroes left standing is the winner. Players are still tied thereafter, the game is simply a draw. Before we wrap up, there are a couple of things that I should mention when mixing sets. 
If simply playing one set against another, simply have each player use one deck from each set, even if mixing non-Mega Man sets with Mega Man sets. However, if you want to build your own decks, which is an option, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. Firstly, the Mega Man cards have different backs from those in the mainline Pixel Tactics series, so in order to mix them together, you'll need to use opaque sleeves. I only have one set of opaque sleeves, so this isn't an option for me. Secondly, bear in mind that Mega Man decks have 28 cards. To play constructed decks, you'll need to remember that standard decks only use 25 cards. However, something that doesn't require any special work are promos. When playing with promos, put all promo cards into a single deck that is shared between players and shuffle them up. When drawing cards at the start of the game, players will each draw four cards from their own deck and one from the promo deck. You may choose your starting promo card as your leader if you so wish. Playing with promos also gives you a new action, Promo Draw. To use this, simply discard one card from your hand and draw from the promo deck. Aside from that, promo cards tend to work just like any other, but tend to be more powerful than normal. On to components, there's really not much to go over here. You have the cards themselves, which are of decent thickness. There's not much art in the cards, and what's there is simply taken from the NES sprites of each character, so it represents them well enough. It also comes with a number of tokens to keep track of damage, which are double-sided with ones on the front and threes on the back. However, I do feel a need to briefly complain about the rules. Instead of a booklet, you have this fold-out sheet, and the size of it is absolutely obscene. If it's bigger than the area you play in, then the rule sheet is simply too large. All in all, Pixel Tactics is a fun, medium-weight tactical game that brings a lot of fun and depth to the table. The Mega Man version does a decent job of representing all the different character abilities, although it is kind of a mixed bag when it comes to theming, since it's trying to give all of them different abilities. Though on that note, I must say, I absolutely love using Wily's leader ability, although at the same time, it is easily shut down by Iceman. The game does require a bit of learning, and I usually wouldn't recommend it as a gateway game. But once you know what you're doing, it plays pretty quickly, and you can get through it in about half an hour or so. Presentation is fairly lacking, but despite that, it's a fun game with lots of meaningful decisions to make. In conclusion, I find Pixel Tactics to be worth a solid 7.5 out of 10. If you're interested in purchasing Pixel Tactics Mega Man Edition, the only way to do so right now is on secondhand sites such as eBay. The good news is that prices aren't too crazy as of the time of recording. If you're interested in learning more, links are included in the description. But what about you? What do you think of Pixel Tactics? What board games do you think that Mega Man would be well suited to be adapted into? If you have any questions, remarks, or opposing points of view, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell. If you really enjoy my work, please consider funding my channel on Patreon. Until next time, farewell, fellow fanatics. Thank you again for watching. I have plenty more to share with you if you're interested. You can click up here above my head to subscribe to my channel. You can click over here on my monitor to see the most recent video that I've worked on. Or if you prefer, you can click up here to open this mysterious vault and see what video that the YouTube algorithm has picked just for you.